Hey everybody, Larry here at Cameo Home Inspection Services and Cameo Real Estate School. Uh, thank you for joining us once again and thank you for your patience as we try to learn about managing little technical things like lighting. Um, it'll come around, but in the meantime, uh, thank you, appreciate it. Hey, a few uh, videos ago, I put out a little teaser about mushrooms growing out from behind Hardy Plank. And uh, I want to take a little bit of time just to kind of explain that phenomena because hardy plank is like a fiber cement material. It's concrete. Uh, you're not going to get mushrooms growing out from hardy plank, right? So where are they coming from? What's going on with that? Uh, why is that happening? So let me see if I can explain that uh, succinctly so that we all have a better understanding. So. Let's go to my board up here and let me use this as a little bit of an example as a starting point. So what I have here is basically a cross section of a wall. Over here I have my framing and the squiggly marks are basically the insulation. On the outside, and I'm moving my way inside out, the red line is basically signifying OSB, oriented strand board, uh, wafer wood, if you will. So basically if you took uh, studs and put them next to each other, you need something to keep them from wanting to go like that. That's what the purpose of that strand board is, uh, to, to provide that kind of structural stability. The next thing on that outer layer is a house wrap. And I labeled that as Tyvek, although Tyvek is a brand name. There's lots of different materials out there that are used for that. But a house wrap basically does two things. Number one is it prevents any kind of bulk water from getting into the structure. And from the inside out, it allows water vapor to escape. So it's kind of a two directional thing. I don't want water in this way, but I want vapor to escape this other direction. Finally, in the outside, I have my siding, be it a panel siding, be it a lap siding, be it LP, be it hardy plank, it doesn't matter, okay? And then integrated into that, I have various other components, typically flashing details and so on. So as an inspector, when I walk up to a house and I look at the outside, in my mind, I kind of divide it up. And I divide it up into three parts. Number one, there's penetrations. Penetrations are doors, windows, hoods, exhaust fan hoods. Anything that goes through that siding is a penetration, all right? Next are intersections. Intersections are places where we make transitions from maybe one kind of siding to another, maybe from a siding to a trim board, like a, a horizontal belly board or something like that. Anything that's not a penetration, anything that's not a transition is the field. Now that's important to me. Everything that happens to a house happens for a reason. So one of the things that I am tasked with is try to help identify the reason so that when I make a recommendation for follow-up, I can give at least some kind of direction. So if I walk up to a house and I see mushrooms that are growing around a window, it's like, ah, okay, odds are really good. There's something wrong with that installation, of that window, the flashing detail, whatever it may be. If I walk up to that house and there's mushrooms growing around the band board, where there's a transition or an intersection. Ah, okay, there's got to be something wrong with that. And it speaks to the possibility of water from the outside getting through the assembly. But when I'm looking at the field and there's nothing there but just siding and I'm seeing mushrooms growing out from that, it's like, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. Something is different here because that doesn't, at least in my mind, tell me that I have water coming from the outside in. It suggests to me the possibility that I have moisture coming from the inside out. How does that happen? Well, there's a variety of different things that can, that can cause that. But basically, remember before we talked about stack effect and hot air rises and it creates pressures inside the house. But one of the classic ones that will, will simplify it, at least in terms of explaining, is pressurizations of bedrooms. So when I look at a house and it has a forced air system, 
the one thing that I do is I always look at the doors to the bedrooms, particularly the master, because the master has more heat registers in it, all right? So I cock that door a little bit, I turn on the furnace, and I want to see if that door closes itself. A lot of times the door is really, really close to the carpet. I think we talked about that before. And I've had people say, well, it's just the carpet. No, I don't care about the carpet. What I care about is whether or not the room is getting pressurized. A lot of times the room gets pressurized so badly that you look underneath where that door sits and the carpet's all dirty. Why is that? It's because the carpet is acting like a furnace filter. So if that room gets pressurized enough during furnace operation and you're pumping in hot, moist air and it can't make it back to the furnace return, it's going to go somewhere. It has to go somewhere. I mean, your room just isn't going to expand like a balloon, so it will go to the attic. It will go to the wall cavities. And trust me, if it goes to some place that's colder, think about it. What happens when hot, moist air reaches a cold surface? Condensation. So imagine here that on the inside of this house, you have hot, moist air that's getting pushed into that wall cavity. It reaches the OSB, which is a cellulose material, which is a food source, which is colder, it's going to condense. And what do mushrooms need to thrive and be happy? They need a food source, cellulose, they need warmth, they need moisture. So this kind of phenomenon is what we call vapor drive. And it's, and it's, it's influenced by a number of factors. It's primarily temperature driven but it's also pressure driven. It's water vapor pressure driven. It is a function of how porous the materials are that has to pass through. There's a number of different things, but in the interest of keeping it just simple, that kind of issue where a bedroom is getting pressurized can actually cause water vapor, hot, moist air to reach a cold surface, cause condensation and cause mushrooms to grow from that OSV that start to peek out from behind that hardy plank siding. You may see that happen in the attic. Remember we talked about attic mold. Well, sometimes that hot moist air goes up into the attic and then you have that mold phenomena going uh, on the underside of the roof sheeting. So let me, before we close, let me show you a really quick uh, actual real life deal here, okay? This drawing represents the master suite only in a house that was about five years old at the time, about uh, 1,200 square feet, I think, something like that. So there's a lot of other house here, but this is just the master suite. This is the door you go into the master. Here's the nice bedroom. Here's a nice closet. And then from that closet, that, that area right there, you enter into the bathroom. You got the typical tub shower and the vanity and the toilet, all right? The furnace return is out in the hallway. And you'll notice each of these R's represents a um, heat register. So I cock this door, I turn on the furnace, and the door goes bam. I mean, literally slams closed. There's so much pressure in that room. Now, you have pressure, you have the master suite, you have humidity. Guess what's happening out here on the outside? There's actually water dripping down from underneath and behind the hardy plank siding. There's that much pressure in that room that it's pushing all that moisture into that wall cavity. Is that going to rot? Absolutely. It's just a function of how long it's going to take. But this is a classic, albeit extreme example of a vapor drive kind of issue. So that's what we're concerned about. And I do have to say that um, I share your frustration as realtors that, you know, we're dealing with this kind of thing. Back 21 years ago when I started, it was all pretty cut and dry. You know, you had carpenter ants or you needed a new roof or you had some LP siding that was damaged. That was it. Have a nice day. Now it's gotten very, very, very complex. So uh, anything that we can do to help understand uh, or help you understand what's going on any questions that we can answer 
let us know because I think particularly now, you know, when we've got so many inspectors out there and everybody's trying to earn a living and do their thing, uh, it can get kind of confusing sometimes. So vapor drive, this is what's going on. If you have questions, get a hold of me. Uh, you can call me 459-1632. You can email me, cameohomeinspection at comcast.net. Um, you can message me on Facebook. Uh, send a carrier pigeon. If the cats don't get to it, I'll read the message. Anyway, that's it for now. Have a wonderful day. Thank you so much.